The topic of this video is curve fitting. Finding the proper relationship between a dependent variable y and an independent variable x. The data we're going to look at comes from the famous book by Draper and Smith called Applied Regression Analysis. It consists of 44 observations showing the amount of chlorine in samples of a product as a function of the age of the product in weeks. Our goal will be to fit a curve to this data so that we can answer some important questions. To be concrete, let's pose a problem. Let's suppose the amount of chlorine in the product must be at least 0.4 for the product to function properly. Given the sample of data, how do we estimate the age, the maximum age, at which no more than 1% of the product is likely to have a chlorine level of less than 0.4. What we need to do to answer this question is to fit a statistical model. Now there are lots of possible models, lots of possible curves we could fit to the data. First off, there's the linear model, which is normally written as y equals mx plus b, defined by the slope m and the intercept b. On the other hand, we have a logarithmic model where the log of y equals mx plus b, a reciprocal x model, y equals m divided by x plus b, a multiplicative model, the log of y equals m times the log of x plus b, and many others. How do we find the best model? In stack graphics, it's very easy to try lots of different models and pick the best. You do it by going to the relate menu, selecting one factor, simple regression. I'm going to tell the program that the column named chlorine has my y values and the column named weeks has my x value. It will then offer to fit any of 27 different curvilinear models to the data. Now I'll start with the linear model but we'll see we can also compare a lot of other models very easily. So let's just take the linear model and press OK. The tables and graphs I'll want to see, first off, I'll want to see the analysis summary. Secondly, the comparison of alternative models. That's going to be the important one. I can also get a table of unusual residuals, a plot of the fitted model, a plot of the residuals versus X. All that looks good. Let's go ahead and press OK, and when I double click in the upper right, I'll see initially a plot of the linear model. This shows the linear model with 95% confidence intervals, those are the inner bounds, and 95% prediction intervals. The confidence intervals are appropriate for the mean response. The bounds, the prediction bounds, appropriate for individual observations. Now, to answer the question I'm interested in, I'm going to click the right mouse button and go to pane options. The first thing I'll do is turn off the confidence limits because it's the prediction limits I'm really interested in. I'll change the confidence level from 95 to 99% and then change the type of limits to lower bound. If I press OK, you'll see now the line of best fit going through the points and a lower 99% bound as a function of X. The idea of that lower 99% bound is that there's a 99% chance if I obtain a future sample of the product that it will be above that bound. Now, where that bound intersects the level of chlorine at 0 0.4, which is my requirement, will be the question if, in fact, that linear model is the best. To determine whether the linear model is adequate for the data, the first thing I can do is go to the analysis toolbar and press the tables and graphs button. I can then ask for a lack of fit test and press OK. The second table from the top on the left 
shows me the analysis of variance. You can see in this table a lack of fit line with a p-value currently shown in red. Since that p-value is small, less than 0.05, it indicates that the linear model is not doing a good job fitting this data. There is significant lack of fit in the data. Now, by the way, you can only do this if you have replicate observations. In this case, more than one observation at the same x, which in fact we do. So we can look at the difference between replicates, get an idea of what the pure error is, pure sampling error, variability amongst observations at the same x, to judge how well the model fits. Okay, so the linear model is not good. What model is good? Well, let's double click to put that table away and go down to the comparison of alternative models. Here you see a list of all 27 models sorted in decreasing order of R squared. Now, R squared measures the percent of the variability in Y that's been explained by the model. If you look down at least halfway through the list, you'll see the linear model. That had an R squared of slightly less than 75%. In fact, there's a number of models up toward the top that have R squareds much higher than the linear model. There is, for example, the squared Y reciprocal X model at almost 88%, a reciprocal X model a little bit less than that, and a whole lot of different models that beat the linear model. Okay, well, which one should I try? Well, you might think to try the one at the top of the list. That's the squared Y reciprocal X. That says that chlorine squared would be a linear function of one over weeks. You might try that, but just below that is one that's nearly as good and considerably simpler. It's called the reciprocal X model. For that model, y is a linear function of 1 over x, not the squared y, just y, just the chlorine. And in statistics, we believe very much in the KISS principle when it comes to modeling. Keep it simple statistically. And the reciprocal x model is considerably simpler than a squared y reciprocal x model. So let's go back to the data. Let's go back to the plot. There it is. Now I'll press my right mouse button, go to Analysis Options, and find the Reciprocal X model. There it is. If I select that and press OK, you'll see a much, much better fit to this data than the linear model. Now to answer the question, at what point does that lower 99% bound fall below 0.4. To find out, I'll press the right mouse button. And on the pop-up menu, choose Locate. What that will do is bring up a set of crosshair cursors. Now what I can do is I can set those crosshair cursors either with my mouse or my cursor key close to 0.4 and find out where 0.4 crosses the line. Well, it looks to me that at about 17 and a half weeks, the 99% bound will fall below 0.4. So up until that time, I could be confident that at least 99%, if not more, of the product would have an acceptable level of chlorine. But past 17.4 weeks, the bound goes below 0.4, so I'm likely to have more than 1% of my product with unacceptable levels of chlorine. Now you may notice that this data contains two somewhat unusual samples, both at 18 weeks, where the amount of chlorine appears to be somewhat higher than I would have expected. To see just how much impact those possible outliers have on my results, I'm going to first press the right mouse button and put myself back into a select mode. I'm then going to click on each of those points, those unusual looking points, then go to the analysis toolbar 
and press the plus minus button. What that will do is that will eliminate both of those two points from the model and re-estimate the model without those two points. If I now go back to the locate mode, I can set my crosshair cursors again near point 4 and see what the answer would be. Well, in this case, it would be about 18 and a half weeks. Looks like those two points there increased the variability such that I estimated a reasonable shelf life to be 17 and a half weeks versus 18 and a half weeks. Now, to really decide whether or not to remove those points, I should go back to whoever collected this data and try to come up with an assignable cause. If I can't, I'll have to leave them in. That would be the conservative thing to do.